Plot, Quill, The Life of a Guide Dog, 2004. Written by Anonymous. As a Labrador puppy, Quill is sent to live with a couple, Isamu and Mitsuko Ni, who work as volunteers, training guide dogs, seeing eye dogs. When he grows to an adult dog, he is taken to a guide dog school, by a friendly, yet firm trainer Satoru Taida. Although Quill is a little slower than the other dogs at the school, he seems to have an unusual empathy and remarkable patience with his trainers. Taid decides that Quill would be the ideal guide dog for Michiru Watanabe, but Wanatabe, a lonely and ill-tempered middle-aged man, isn't as enthusiastic, he would would rather sleep than be dragged around by a dog. From here, the story is narrated by Wanatabe's daughter, Mitsuko, and slowly, Wantan is rehabilitated, venturing into the outside world, and learning, not only to trust other humans, but the animal at his side who guides him. Voice over off. When you're blind and watching movies, what will you find? A blind superhero whose superpowers are acting like he's not blind. A sighted actor over dramatically touching people's faces. And maybe the whole joke is that they're bumping in to different places. A spectacular. Welcome to Citizen White Kane. Oh my gosh, to Citizen White Kane, the podcast where we stop you from um, hitting the sharp corners of blind representation in film and TV. My name is Sky McLeod. I'm Melissa Buckta. <laughs> and good enough to good start. Just can't speak today. Perfect. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's just a podcast. Um, but today we are watching. We watch. We already did um, the film. As you heard from 2004, Japanese film called Quill, The Life of a Guide Dog. Yes, it was your week to pick the movie. Yes. And oh boy, this is definitely going to go on my list of like self-care, feel-good movies. <laughs> even, even though I was totally sobbing by the end. But it's very sad. It's, I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's also kind of remarkable and beautiful in a way because it's life. It's it's the life of a guide dog. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. I was not expecting um, like, I, yeah, I was expecting it to be a little bit more like um, something that you would watch, like kind of like a class, like in a class of some kind, obviously, like just like this is like to learn about a certain like idea of like how you raise a guide dog <laughs> and that it was like going to be much more like, you know, we're going to teach you this, how the, you know, what happens and how the whole system works. But it like, as we watch Quill's life um, and, and his story, <laughs> we, it becomes more of like a, like a human story that is like about Quill, but also kind of not always. Well, yeah. And if this were a, an American film, Quill would have been more anthropomorphized, but he's not. You you can still, obviously, you can tell that Quill has feelings and, you know, you can impose what you like on onto his behavior. But it, this is definitely not, you know, dog looks over and kind of goes and like tilts his head, you know, and one of, and like a, that that kind of thing. Or Well, none, none of the animals talk. The animals are animals. Yeah, there is. um well, there is. We do get to see Quill's dream at one point. <laughs> oh my God, that was that's terrifying. <laughs> I was say, I was, that just felt kind of like what? Are we, what movie is this? <laughs> like, because he, because I mean, I guess we can start going through the different. Sure, plot sure. It's this is filmed kind of like a documentary. Yes, uh, and like the like our synopsis said, the the film is told in voiceover, narrated in voiceover. Right. Uh, by, I'm going to say Watanabe. I'm not exactly sure if that's how you pronounce his name, but I, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, that's by okay. Yeah, by Mr. Watanabe's daughter. Right. And and is there a second, is, is the first household that Quill is in, do they narrate, does the woman at the, the 
like I guess the second house because we see them go to the different families um, that a guide dog goes to. I don't think so. I thought it was just the daughter narrating throughout. She's kind of an on- omniscient narrator. Yeah, I thought so too. But then like there was one thing that um, in the end, and I guess this is just a, a random thing to be talking about now so we can kind of like get more into the plot. But like but I, for some reason, I think just with the Japanese and the subtitles, I didn't, like, I wasn't catching how people's voices were different, especially with the voiceover, you don't get to see who's talking. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, I thought in the end when they come back to, spoiler for the end of the movie, um, to, like, the home that he was in, he was a puppy in, that, like, the voiceover, she's saying, like, he, it's like he didn't, he never left, he recognized the home, and I was like, wait, what is this? Like, it seemed... Oh, right. I'm pretty sure it's his daughter's voice. Okay. Because she That's is kind of, she is kind of the, well, she's the narrator, but she's also the, the voice of Quill, quote unquote. The voice of his, like his, his voice. Right. His like, um, his thoughts. Yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, cause she'll say things like she'll speculate on what it's, or I guess sometimes it's not even speculating. She will say like, this is how he felt about this or like right, kind of right. like without being too like, um, Cause I think at one point she does guess. I feel like this is we should the plot. It's very like plotted out, and I feel like we're I keep bringing up things <laughs> from like the end of the movie. So <laughs> okay, so let's so let's start at the beginning. Yeah. So we meet we meet this uh, this lady uh, who is the owner of Quill's mom. Um, right. Who's the, like the breeder? Yeah. She is uh, breeding uh, his litter, and she wants this litter of, of yellow Labrador retrievers to be guide dogs. Right. And they're so cute and you get to see the little puppies and they all have these squished little faces. They're and very cute. They're um, extremely cute. And uh, I guess, do we do we have like a sense of um, why she decides, because she like calls someone about guide dogs and she's like I think these dogs might be good candidates for a guide dog. And you're like, no, oh, and she just kind of, she just kind of calls them. And it's, I mean, you, um, obviously, you know, the movie's called Quill, the guide dog story. So you know about, about, you know, it's going to be about guide dogs. Right. So when you see these dogs, you're like, oh, these are guide dogs because they're yellow Labrador retrievers. So yeah, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't really strike me as odd. She just was like, yeah, I want them to be guide dogs. Yeah. It's just funny because she, um, it's it's like she's like I just had this idea to do this and I I don't know I would imagine that if you were breeding guide dogs I mean I guess it was just funny to me it was just very nonchalant of like yeah I was just thinking maybe they would be good for guide dogs it just it was just the writing was very silly and I don't know it's like it's subtitled so it could be that the translation made it seem more silly well and only Quill makes it out of the entire litter yes well because they have this moment where they're like the thing that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to call them and you have like the whole the big litter and then um, almost most of the litter comes and there's a few string stragglers um, and then they each go um, like one by one and you see that Quill is still there and I'm like the the whole point is whoever stays back is going to be the one that should be the guide dog and I thought that and then uh, they were like yes and <laughs> whoever <laughs> is the one who stays back is the real is the one that would be a good candidate right, for the guide dog right because he's he's like pausing to assess the situation right yeah <laughs> which is interesting I mean I guess like I was trying to figure out um like I, you don't if you're impulsive then you're much more likely to um like just run into the street or bark at something or but you would think that you would also want a dog that was good at coming when their owner <laughs> needed them who couldn't see like you would want yeah. to be able to call your dog and have I them suppose come. maybe maybe because they are they aren't impulsive and they're very good at at, ino- at ignoring distractions that they that's... are they're better at coming like they're it's easier to teach them to right. come I mean it kind of makes sense yeah that you would you want a dog that is like yeah not easily distracted by things and just eventually because i think he does eventually come and that's the idea because i wonder if he just never came if that would be like well that's the other problem if they never come yeah because and and so so that 
would be weeded out at the guide dog school because n- not all of the dogs who are born are chosen to be guide dogs. Not all the guide dogs that go to the school are chosen to be right. or continue on with the program. The movie doesn't really touch on that because we're following one specific dog yeah. who is kind of perfect. Not 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 perfect perfect, but he's but a, he's a really good guy. He's dog. supposed to be the perfect like cuz I think that we have once we get to Mr. Montanabe, they you have this like like there's kind of um the I don't know if odd couple would be the right word, but like the contrast the foil for each other is that he's just so ridiculous as a person and so impulsive and like to such an extreme extent um so i feel like because of that the quill um is kind of just there also is more supposed to contrast as like the platonic ideal of a guide dog whereas he is just like the blind man who just is not is you know, just having a lot of struggling a lot with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, even even though he's like an, an authority figure in his disability community. Um, yeah, he works for his uh, disability council. Yeah, which I was like, I don't know. And I mean, I guess we can kind of we we'll talk more about him as we get there. But mm-hmm. like, um, but yeah, so the breeder we have their. Um, that's they, do they name him um when he gets to his like first year home yes i think they're the puppy raisers or in in this film they're called puppy walkers but pup, okay. i've always heard the term puppy raisers but it's or foster um foster family like and right yeah there's a different there's a myriad of terms but uh, i think they end up choosing name. his name because of this the this funny little spot that's yes. that's on him Right, which makes it, which is good for a visual language yeah, to yeah. differentiate which dog he is when you have very similar dogs all um, together. In, in, I believe, in actual guide dog um, breeding, though, because uh, some of the guide dogs who are too nurturing or too maternal uh, that don't make it are kept at the school to be bred. Uh, oh. For other, for other. Now, granted, I don't own a guide dog. I've never gotten a guide dog, but I've talked to a lot of people mm-hmm. who have them, and I've talked yeah. to people who run schools and stuff. So, I'm a little bit. I know a little bit of stuff. Um, yeah. So those dogs are kept at the school to make to have puppies, and then litters that happen. You have like A litter, B litter, C litter, D litter. All of those dogs' names will start with that letter of the alphabet. Oh, I think I've heard about this. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, quill just kind of happens, but we, which is awesome. Wait, don't they look in the dictionary for keywords? Yes, they do. So that is probably oh, it. okay. So he his litter might have been considered like Q litter. Yeah. So they needed to find a Q name. That's not easy. Yeah, that seems <laughs> well. That's well, and I love that they have like because there's a lot of things where it's like. Um, they train them with English words so that it doesn't, right. they don't get confused, right. um, which is also something you do, um, with dogs here where you would like use German words or something, you know, like some word that they're not oh, going to be hearing as commonly. Yeah. A good friend of mine, her, her mother, uh, raises, uh, rescue dogs, search and rescue dogs. And they're all trained in, well, the shepherds are at least they're all trained in German. Yeah. Yeah. It's a common one though. I always learn German on my phone. So I always think if I like, <laughs> Um, had a one a dog that was trained in German. I would like anytime I tried to do Duolingo, they'd be like, "What? What? What do you want me to do?" <laughs> the only the only thing I can ever remember is Platz. Platz. <laughs> well, yeah, yes, yeah, Sitzen. Sitzen. Okay. Gehen. <laughs> Gehen. Um, <laughs> or Ge. It would be well that that makes it sound more like um the um. I don't know. It sounded more Japanese when I said it because <laughs> we were talking about this movie. Um, but yeah, so they, um, so they're looking the t-shirt. My favorite thing is when they find the word quill, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, it means like um, ink and uh, um, I don't, I don't know." They define the A word feather. quill, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and <laughs> the reaction the the um, the mom has is like. Oh, how modern. <laughs> yes. Like, it's quill. <laughs> it's just, it's like, definitely not. Modern is not the, the first thing you would think of, but I guess because well, it's like an English word. They, and they call him quill, but a lot, but they also have like a, this, pet, they, this pet name for him. Which is Q. 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 Which is like yeah. the, the baby 
like um, his his baby home where he's a right. Before it, he it was always one. it was always cute and never quill. Yeah, they like <laughs> don't say quill at all. I don't think. Yeah. yeah, which I I wonder is that like is there a reason for that? How do they say now, that? I couldn't titles? tell you. No. Um, yeah, I don't know. But they. Um, yeah, so they have, so he gets named Quill and then chills at the, that house with the couple, um, mm-hmm. for a year. A year, while he's yeah, his first year. Getting used to people. And this yep. is when we're still getting a voiceover that's really just like, could easily be a educational video in like health yeah, class. Yeah, it's, it's very, <laughs> yeah, no, the movie especially in the beginning is extremely documentary like I had to I had to keep telling myself yeah you're actually watching a movie yeah because it feels very 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 documentary it's like and like, yeah I remember in documentary class in college we like watched like board of Canada movies where they would just like give information of just like things that were like public works projects you know like it would just be all these very very instructional things or they would have like um uh what is it called um where you act out something um in a documentary there's a term for it that i can't remember now um, a reenactment yeah yeah i guess mm. that's they have like reenactments of things and then voiceovers and it's just like and it's just kind of very dry and it definitely at the beginning felt just like that um it's also, I the score at the very beginning. <laughs> there's like a flute that is just does not quit for oh, the first like thirty it, minutes. It's I think it's a recorder and it permeates <laughs> yeah. the entire film. Like that's the score. And at the beginning, it like I don't think there's a single moment that it's not. And it's like it, I feel like that's the melody is like <laughs> it's not like changing the melody all that often. It's like generally the same exact. <laughs> it's almost like you just have a like um. Uh, just like, uh, what is it? Why am I not thinking of words today? Um, like a track that's just repeating, a uh, loop, a loop. Oh my gosh. Yes. A loop. Um, but I mean, I didn't really find it super incredibly distracting. I, I guess I kind of associate the recorder with cute things, which I think is what this film is doing. It's Yeah. It definitely wasn't like distract. I just thought it was funny. I mean, it felt it it felt appropriate for it. It was just like it felt very specific, and um, and I just thought it was very funny that it was just so like um, just just yeah, there the whole time. It, the beginning there's just a lot of puppies and there's not even that many subtitles you have to read so i was just like fuck yeah i'm in for this yep yep this is great <laughs> this is great i i love i mean I, I i grew up on animal planet so i would watch dog shows all of the time and they would have puppy shows and all yeah um, just watching puppies hang out and so many of the shots at the beginning especially are just of little, the dog little like baby you're puppies. barely seeing yeah. the people so yeah. it's like <laughs> yes yes no this this movie had me at puppy so yeah, yeah. and and then at the at his first home the couple that that he lives with is wonderful and warm and loving and they take him in the garden and they have this cute little toy chest for him that he opens up and gets all his toys out and he scatters them across the yard and yeah it's very very cute and that's Mm -hmm. and it's of the toy that he has the dream right they give him they give him his favorite his favorite toy which is this little teddy bear and it does a dance when he dreams about it yes it does this really weird dance and it squeaks (laughs) uncontrollably when he dreams about it yeah but he does love the noise and Mm -hmm. the voice over the top he like, likes he things, loves the noise yeah he likes things that squeak <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah the first 30 minutes just so so many just just watching a dog just a, ba- a little puppy <laughs> just be stuff. a dog yeah yeah so just learn great. and be and be a dog <laughs> yeah um mm-hmm. and so that's the first well i guess the couple's technically is second home if we had the breeders because they are like this right. is his first journey this oh, is right. his first Pairing. leaving mm-hmm. like of and it's kind of it is kind of sad because he does keep leaving places oh yeah um, you, you and you feel for him i mean yeah. i'm yeah yeah it, he leaves his litter and then he leaves the breeders and then he has to go to the school it's like my goodness he has to get used to so many different places yeah and so many different people but that's that's his job yeah, it is. It's really like because I always think about that with with guide dogs, knowing how 
much training in different homes they go to mm -hmm. like by the time you get them because it is kind of like um yeah it's just it, it it's such a weird thing and the fact that they also have to retire so you know a, a lot of times i think people will keep dogs that they if it is their guide dog that's, but that's not always true that's an option some people yeah. do yeah i've i've heard of a few of uh, people that do but then if they, you need they just an, become their family pet if you need another dog you have to make sure you can take care of a dog that's not guiding you right. now right so that like makes it also yeah. complicated i think a fair amount of, of guide dogs do go to well quote-unquote retirement homes and that might be back to their puppy raisers right. their, that might be adopted out who knows I think, yeah, and I think that what they do for that is they'll have them, first, they'll give people the option in the chain, so the f they first give the blind person the option to keep them as the pet, and then they go to um, the, I think they probably go to the puppy raiser unless they do have another, like, home that they're in for training, but I don't think usually they do. I think they would go back to the pup, like, the puppy raiser, maybe even the breeder, and then they will put up them up for their dogs. So, and this is kind of questions were raised with the puppy raisers at this part of the movie because I really enjoy this show on Disney Plus called Pick of the Litter. Oh, you should I've check it out. It. It's it's about guide dogs. Oh, and it's about uh, their lives and through through guide dog uh, through the guide dog program. And the first couple of episodes focuses specifically on puppy raisers. Oh, so not we only should have been watching that instead. <laughs> well, I mean, we still can. <laughs> it's a deep dive. Yeah, yeah. We'll, it's we'll it's actually it. a really good series. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, the when you're a puppy raiser, it, yes, it's your job to play and love and and cuddle and socialize them, like absolutely. But you're also actually training them a lot. Like these yeah. dogs, these dogs are in harness with their puppy raisers. Oh wow! And there are several times when the guide dog school will come in and check to make sure that they are hitting milestones and markers that they need to hit and then they're tested again a couple of times before they can even go back to the school wow that's so, so it's it's, so it's actually hardcore. really fascinating yeah yeah and then do they so is that with the puppy raisers mm -hmm. it's kind of like that's like is it like elementary school yeah basically so it so it kind of sort of I was like, oh, maybe the Japanese guide dog system is different. I don't know. Or you just might not see a lot of that because that's not the story that they wanted to tell. Because they but, talk a little bit about how, like, oh, we take him to different places to get more custom and, like, certain right. things of, like, not getting distracted. and so. Right. And that's – and they – yeah. And these other people on this show do do that 100%. But they're also – they it's also their responsibility to start the training. The right. obedience training, the, the non-distraction training, the poop training, the everything. I think they, like, hinted that in the movie, mm -hmm. but it's, like, super not explicit and it's not, and you're not sure, yeah, how much they're actually, like, what kinds of things they're doing more that it's kind of, like, in voiceover, like, oh, we need to make sure he's good at this and, like, kind of testing. And I think that, do they have, like, the trainers kind of come and visit him even before they grab him? A few times, I think. One or one or two times, I think this the trainer that um, kind of becomes Quill's buddy. Yeah, uh, comes and checks on him a couple of times. Right, and then at a certain point after what, on his first birthday, mm -hmm. he leaves his second home mm -hmm. um, to go to the guide school. dog school. Yeah, yeah. it's like where going he, off to college. Yep, where he lives with the other guide dogs. Yes, loads of other guide dogs. Yeah, <laughs> and he um, like. Yeah, he is kind of, um, they have them in kennels, which I guess I was like trying to read up on stuff, which I think sometimes they'll have like hosts, like f host families as they're going through training will take them home so they get more used to being at home because like being in a kennel is probably not as um, going to be as useful necessarily if you're living with a person. Oh, I know. These are just these little tiny kennels. And I mean, I know they don't stay in there all day. But I'm just kind of like, oh, that's that's not how I would do it. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of sad because you're like, yeah, they have all like these are hardworking doggos. Like they're not <laughs> they're not fucking around. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> they deserve somewhere nice to not like, lay yeah, their not a tiny concrete box, which is what these are. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's that's not cool. Well, and then that gets into the way that uh, Mr. Watanabe treats Quill, which I in the beginning is wrong. 
Yeah. Well, and yeah, well, there's one specific thing I think that, or that he does that I think is absolutely irreprehensible. Which, but, do you want to say it now? Oh, sure. Or? Why not? So uh, we obviously know that Quill is going to be paired up with Mr. Watanabe. Yeah. And when he is taken home to live with Mr. Watanabe after they graduate the program, um, Mr. Watanabe and the kids have set up a little, a cute little house for him outside in this little pen that they've created. And that's where Quill lives when he's at home with the family, which is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of, it's weird. Like, that's very much not something you would do. But also, I it's stated that his wife is not really a dog person at first. She very much warms up to Quill. And again, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know anything really about Japanese culture especially in relationship to dogs so i don't know if it's just a thing that dogs aren't allowed in the home but i would assume that a guide dog would be i mean he's out you there in want the rain the guide dog to be yeah right he's out there in the rain he's out there in the boiling heat it's yeah it's kind of ridiculous it is it's a lot it is an interesting um the way that he is treated in the family setting i also wonder like why do they why does Mr. Watanabe agree to this? He just is not a dog person cuz well at, <laughs> at first yeah no so we we meet we meet Mr. Watanabe and he yeah. is a stubborn man. Yes, and he yells a lot. He like is someone who like you know how like when people who are very ableist are like, oh, you're blind, and then they're just like yelling at you. That's like, he's <laughs> what his character is like, <laughs> but he's the blind one and he's just yelling at sighted people. And you're just like, why are you yelling? Well, I mean, he's yelling because he's looking for someone or looking for something and he can't find that thing. But usually so it's like he's yelling you. at someone he's actively talking to. Like when he's lost, he doesn't yell. It's just like mm-hmm. when he's having a conversation, he's yelling. <laughs> it just, it's very confusing to me. <laughs> but, but I don't know. I wondered if it was partly the actor's performance. I was like, this is not how blind people are. <laughs> well, okay, but... We're also, we have to look at this through Japanese culture. Right. I'm, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying their culture is like to yell at everyone, but I don't know. But he was the only character. He was also even the only blind character who behaved that way. It was just a no, very that's, odd that's choice. True. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's his, that's his kind of gruff, stubborn, you right, know. He's very stubborn. Yeah. Because uh, through the course of the movie, because uh, he is paired up with Quill. Quill becomes his, his guide dog. Through the course of the movie, he mellows out quite a bit. Yeah, he, we, yeah, we get to see him at first. He's yelling. He is very, like, I do it my way. Yeah. Oh, because he, the first time he meets Quill is in the supermarket. Yeah. And he's like, I don't like dogs. Well, he goes to, like, put his hand down. He's like, oh, what is it doing? Right, when, right, when, right. When, he's, when right. Quill smells his hand. He says, yeah, and he says, I don't want to be pulled around by some mutt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just very funny. It's just, I, I mean, like... So, there's so few guide dogs, at least in the U.S., like, it's very, like, it's, you know, kind of, it, you can be on a wait list for a very long time to get a guide dog. It's, oh, I think, like, 10% of blind people, you know, have one, which doesn't mean necessarily 10% are able to, because not everyone goes after having one. But, like, there's, it doesn't meet all the needs of, like, as many blind people as there are. So, I'm just, like, I'm sure there's someone who would, like, maybe benefit more from the dog that but i don't maybe maybe they have a better system for like having more dogs to meet the need but like i'm like i don't know he just seemed so like he had to be won over with the dog and he used his cane i mean he was and like you know i just thought it was funny i was like he doesn't technically need just because he's blind doesn't mean he needs to have a guide dog like canes are another mobility device that's true i mean i don't i don't have a guide dog i have a cane right i mean do i want a guide dog yeah, I mean, I, I have would to love admit, a guy dog. Watching but... this movie, I was like, I should get on a I wait know, list, <laughs> right? I was like, that's the first thing I want to do. I'm like, I'm gonna go to Boring, where the do- where the guide dog school is. <laughs> I know. Get me a guide dog. Yeah, it really. Yeah, it, but this makes it's you want to do that. It's so funny because I've talked to different guide dog schools, and it depends on who you talk to. Some people will tell me I am blind, therefore I have a right. It is my right as a blind person to to get a guide dog. 
Which some, I agree with. Yes, 100%. Some people, I've uh, told them about my vision and how it works, and they said, nope, in our program, you wouldn't get one. You just, you have too much vision. Yeah, that's bullshit. That, that I, I have no, I hate that. Um, well, I'm also a little worried that, as far as having too much vision, that I might, you know, break the dog. Break the dog? Well, so? as in, the dog would become... A t- a toy, and not a tool. Like a well, a pet, I guess. Yeah, a pet, and not a, a not a, a a tool to help you get around. Yeah, I mean, that's like a theory that I've thought about before. But I'm, I do use my cane, even though I have like enough vision to technically get around without the cane. I really feel much more comfortable having it. I feel a lot safer having the cane, um, and I much prefer to have it. Um, than not having one. And so I feel like I, I, and if I had a dog that someone was helping me train, I do think I would like also be pretty committed to like training them. Like if it could be, and someone who's specifically teaching like a blind person how to train a dog like that, I would definitely like, it would just, it would, I would just make it part of my routine to train them. So like, I feel like I probably wouldn't do that. And I also think that I'm, I haven't, enough like um you know with my peripheral vision I I can do a lot of like navigating visual space but I still think I would like be able to use one so I don't know I Mm -hmm. feel like if you are using one you probably it has more to do with if it's a good match maybe like if the dog is a good match for you and you feel like you can trust the dog like to to do what you need but and we see we see quill help and save Mr. Watanabe's knife's life several times. Which, like, probably is not that common for a guy, Doug, because Mr. Watanabe just cannot, <laughs> just cannot, like, agree to do things that are just literally like, you're just gonna die. You're gonna get hit by a bus. Like, literally hit by a bus. I think he does get hit by a bus in Well, the movie. almost. Almost. He tries to walk across the street, and there's a, a bunch of traffic coming, and that's when Quill is like, no. Right. You're not walking. And then all of a sudden, the traffic just zips by, and I'm like, oh my god. He almost died. Like, a, you, how does he function? Because, like, why? Well, but then but then he gets chastised by the guide dog school for going out alone and trying stuff on his own. And I'm like, well, I understand. But yeah. also, you are trying to make him independent. So right. he's going to, he, he and Quill are going to go outside, with you know, by themselves and do things without you there. Right. They have to be able to do that. Like, that it seems totally, yeah, that bothered me as well. That, like, it it's because it's like that paternalizing being paternal of just like oh well you need extra help to like be able to do this right and it's like that's not if this is supposed to be empowering people to have the same like privilege to get around then you know kind of defeats the purpose if you're like well you can't get around without us when it's like okay yeah that's what it was before i thought the whole point of this was like to not have to do that anymore um but yeah it the the school is it's I know that some of it is kind of like how you what I've heard from like schools in the in the states now how they you know have to pass certain tests um and I imagine a lot of it is training the um humans to like Mr. Watanabe just can't like he he like it's not that he is not it's not even that he's just not doing things he's supposed to do. He's just, like, actively doing things that seem just just weirdly, like, you don't have to do that, and you're putting yourself well, in harm's way. And doing I, think, I think he's given, they give him a guide dog because here is a way, here's a dog, here's a tool that will help you do things better, safer, and more efficiently. Yeah. Like, when he's walking to the city hall, it usually, I, somewhere it's mentioned that it takes him an hour or something to walk there. And the trainer... And I'm I'm always refer to him as the trainer because I honestly can't pronounce his name. I don't even. We'll just go the trainer. The trainer, I'm but he's either. he's very I'm nice. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm very sorry. Uh, but the trainer comes up with Quill, and he's like, "Here, you should take Quill because you can get to City Hall in five minutes. Five minutes. You no, know, yeah. where where is it taking you an hour? Yeah, to get there. I it's so much more efficient. How does that happen? How could it possibly be that big of a difference? I have no idea. I, I don't know much about Mr. Watanabe's day-to-day life, but 
Yeah, I don't. I, it's I think, never explained how because like maybe it could save you a few minutes, but I can't imagine it would. Be I think any it's more mostly it's mostly for efficiency. You have you'd be with Quill, he can help you. You're getting around would be so much more efficient and easier for you. Fifty five minutes though, like and also like from an hour to five minutes, I just can't buy that. All like anything other than just like a car or something would change. Like, if you walk somewhere and it takes an hour, and driving it takes five minutes, that's the one scenario where I feel like an hour and five minutes are the two options. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's never explained, because when he says five minutes, I'm like, wait, what? And you really, it's, yeah, he's just like, oh, I'll just make it easier. Um, but, yeah, we're never really explained why it would make it that much easier. Um, and so Mr. Watanabe tries, and he gets a little scared because Quill goes very fast. Right. And he's not used to walking as fast as this <laughs> and going and speeding up. And well, and I, I'd always been curious, you know, can you use a cane while you use a dog? Right. You know, is that a thing you can do? Yes. Apparently. <laughs> because Mr. Watanabe does. And I think they use it more like we see everyone use it a lot more when they're like when they get to the school where they're working with the guy, Doug, at first, they're always using the cane and the dog. Mm-hmm. And then as time goes by, they start just using the dog. Right. And that's that's I think would something that would take me the longest to learn because I'm very dependent on my cane. If I don't I can't leave the house without it. I get nervous and scared if I if I don't have my cane. Yeah, I because I do have a pet dog. I am used to dog or cane. I already have that as the binary. Like I won't if I leave the house with neither, then I'm like, oh my god, what am I doing? But um, but I always um, when I have Samwise with me, I don't um, I don't use my cane because um, he's not a guide dog. So he'd just be like, what are you doing? Why are you trying to hit me with a cane? <laughs> um, so so I feel like that would be an easy adjustment for me, but. But yeah, no, it is. I wonder, do you think that like, though, you would kind of just be replacing the same? It would it would just be like kind of a, getting a different kind of cane. It would feel just like you were getting a different kind of cane. In yeah, because I mean, what I what I thought was really interesting is they talk about how Quill is going to help you, you know, walk down the stairs and notice that there's a curve because you're going you're going to you have to feel the way the dog walks Right. when you're learning how to walk downstairs. You have to feel that your dog is is uh, descending a set of stairs and that's how you know oh stairs that's kind of sort of the same way a cane works too this is just a four-legged living cane that can tell you where curbs are and will go the direction that you tell it to and will stop you from getting hit by oncoming traffic yeah for the most part it is kind of funny i do this these are all things that technically at times sam Lines has done for me which i think <laughs> is very funny obviously he's extremely not trained at all to do it. I mean, he's like obediently trained, but not, you know, definitely not going to pass guide dog school and he's tiny, so he would never even qualify. But, um, but he definitely, he's also pretty good about knowing when the traffic is. And so he'll like, if we're trying to cross the street, he knows, though I am more afraid. So a lot of times when there is no cars coming, but I'm still being a scaredy cat, he'll be like, come on, we can go now. (laughs) Why aren't you moving? But he'll (laughs) wait for like any time there's cars, he always waits Mm -hmm. for them. So it is. And then like sometimes when he's behind me, um, when I'm walking and he's like sniffing something and um, and he is behind me, then I will. I'm much more likely to trip at that point because I'm not <laughs> like I'm not able to use him to like kind of feel what he's doing. So, so yeah, it is. I I totally get how that works, but um, which is also why I can like have him or the cane, but I feel very naked without like either of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but but unlike Samwise, the uh, <laughs> guide dogs are not allowed to sniff things or poop or pee at all. Right when they're in harness, yeah, yeah. no sniffing, no pooping, no peeing, no barking. Yeah, so they're really they're very good dogs. That is not as much as I can say for mine. And no touching. I would just like to reiterate: like, don't ever walk up to a person with a guide dog if the dog is in harness and go touch the dog you would think that i that i wouldn't have to say that but there's hours of videos on youtube of idiot people harassing people with guide dogs don't touch the dog it's the the dog is not there for you the dog is not being treated cruelly because you can't pet the dog or give it a treat do people actually think that oh yeah that the 
What? Oh yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I've seen videos of people like getting thrown out of establishments because they come in with their guide dog. Well, I've heard about that, which is terrible, but that's mm-hmm. a terrible thing I already knew about. I've never heard of people <laughs> saying you're abusing your dog because it's a guide dog and it's just being a guide dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what? Because these old freaking ladies get pissed off because because uh well drew lynch is a he's a really funny comedian and he has um a service dog named stella and he goes through this shit all of the time he's got some real good youtube videos uh but people will just get mad at him because he won't let them touch her it's like no she's working right now she's on duty yeah i don't it is always so surprising to me just I don't know. It's just this is such basic stuff. It is something when I was a kid, like I was undiagnosed for a very long time, but I just remember being like four years old. My mom was like, if a dog is working, you do not pet that dog. Mm -hmm. Like, just like, why is not ever like it's that was very easy for her to just say that under no circumstances are you going to pet a dog when they're in their harness and they're working. You're yeah, you're honestly supposed to ignore them. You're yeah. supposed to pretend well, like they're not the there. Well, that's the thing that people don't even realize, too, is you're not supposed to make eye contact with them because nope. that's distracting as well. Right, right. You, yeah, you, the, the dog isn't there to well, you. That's, right. You know. It's kind of like when you're interpreting the first sign language. Like, you're not, you're supposed to make eye contact with the person mm-hmm. you're talking to, not with the interpreter. Um, mm-hmm. but, well, and I think, I can't remember where I heard this from, if it was the pick of the litter or someone else who I was talking to, but if you are living in a house where the guy, you have a guide dog and the other people in your house don't, honestly, the other people are supposed to ignore the dog too because you have to have that bond with your dog. So no one is supposed to feed your dog, to let your dog out, to care for your dog, except for you. I think, are they, aren't they allowed to play with the dog off harness? Off harness, yes. Yeah. But yeah, but as far as like, food and other things like that that's your job to, right. to take care of, of the dog because that's the bond that you have yeah it's a big it's it's a dog human bonds are very <laughs> strong i was mm-hmm. reading stuff and they also mentioned this in the movie that there's like there's like cave paintings or whatever where they have like blind people blind men with dogs that they're like yeah even though it's like sort of in as an institutionalized um thing that it's like what we have now with guide dogs is it's like turn of the century i guess of like 1900s early 1900s but like but apparently historically there's been there's speculated that guide dogs have been um existed very long ago but i guess you just if you see it in a picture you don't necessarily know if the dog's guiding them or if it just happens to be a blind person man with a dog that is some doing some other thing but um but i thought that was well, really and, interesting yeah, that is super interesting and i mean dogs it comes from years of genetically programming and tweaking and and playing with dogs um with their you know through evolution and everything that that has happened yeah and some breeds of dog are better for guiding than others yeah, there's so, only like I think like five breeds that are generally golden retriever. Yeah, golden retriever, Labrador retriever, German shepherd, and are I guess like they do the less three. German shepherds now. They do also like poodle standard. Poodles. Oh, really? Okay, I hadn't heard about. Standard I think because I I um have a friend who has a poodle um, guide dog, and I think it's for um, allergies. Like oh, because they're hypo- hypoallergenic. Yeah, yeah exactly. that makes sense. No, my my uh, blind friend from Baltimore. Uh, his dog is a German Shepherd. Oh. And I always thought that was fucking cool. It was like two two dudes had shown up at the blind center and they both had guide dogs and they both were German Shepherds. I'm wow. like, what is the the coincidence, the chance <laughs> of that? But yeah, his his dog was super fucking awesome. And I'm like, man, if I ever get a guide dog, honestly, I want a German Shepherd. <laughs> I mean, my, my second choice is, re- is Golden Retriever because that's what I had growing up. And then Labrador probably would be my third. Not because I don't like labs. Labs are great, but... Um, I really want a German Shepherd. Oh. I've, I've even got names picked out. Oh, except for you're not allowed to name them, right? I know, I know. I, I, I feel like I would want a Golden Retriever. It's this very basic one, but I just they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they're very cute. But yeah. um, yeah, I um, yeah, I've definitely thought about it before uh, getting a guide dog. I'm in a living situation now that permits me or doesn't um, that uh, yeah permits me from having a guide dog but uh, I'm telling you once I move out well technically 
I'm going to look into it. Technically, that legally can't be true, though, right? Well, she hasn't. uh, I mean, she can't if I wanted to get one. But um, she's very nicely asked that I refrain from getting one because of the cats. So Wait, because of the cats? Yeah, because she has cats. She just doesn't want, like, three animals in the house. Well, that's not a real reason, though. No, but, you know, it's not like I can move out today, so. Yeah. Um... But, yeah, that's important. Well, that's a good PSA, though. Got it. Like, it's not it's not a preference thing. Like, if someone has a guide dog, that's you can't discriminate against them. That is true discrimination. Not anything other than that. Also, your your dog would be tr- should be trained well enough to leave the cats alone. De- definitely. I mean, that's... And also, guide dogs are the most rigorous like it is the if a dog is trying it's the harvard of like service dogs you know become you know mm-hmm. you it t- takes it's the hardest to yeah a guide it's, dog it's, of a, any other it's one. such a small percentage of dogs that actually make it yeah. through the system it's insane they're like the and, I, and i'm pretty sure this is this is not just me saying this i think i've heard this multiple times the guide dogs are the most like yeah the the most rigorously trained service animals um they have at least for disabilities but yeah i mean they have to be you you are putting your life in this dog's paws yeah they're it's a serious job mm-hmm. um but yeah so because of that like you know the idea it like allergies <laughs> there is my mom was oh god she like saw someone post something from reddit um that was just like someone who is allergic to dogs and had a good friend who was blind and asked that friend to not bring their guide dog to this like the person who's allergic to dogs is wedding yeah well then i guess your your friend isn't coming to your fucking wedding well that okay see wow my thing was, and she was like, is this ableist of me? And I was yes, just like... Yes, it's extremely ableist of you. I I mean, I think... For me, the case, my only take was just like, these people should not be friends. Like, what the fuck? Why are they <laughs> friends? Like, it just seems so dumb to me. Because I know, like... If, if she really wants to be her friend, she should pop a fistful of Claritin and shut the fuck up and let I her mean, bring her dog i because i because the thing is i was just like well i mean if it's your wedding and it's a guest but i was just no. like why is this because i just thought it was just such a bad my big thing was like why would two people who can never be in the same room together why would they be friends like well, because maybe, maybe it's just this woman's like holding resentment for her friend maybe they were friends before she got the guide dog apparently not apparently okay, like they well. would only <laughs> hang out like outside and she would take a bunch of drugs it just and i'm like why are you maintaining this friendship like i would <laughs> never if i had a guide dog i would never want to be friends with someone who is deathly allergic to dogs like i'm just like why <laughs> would you do that to yourself and why would someone who's deathly allergic to dogs want to have a friend who had a guide dog like because you have every right to take that that guide dog wherever you go and you need them but like it just it seemed i i'm still just like what the fuck why would but apparently everyone was like yeah you're ableist for like thinking the blind person can't take their dog and then other people were like oh no it's ableist for that friend to be mad at you for like saying you couldn't go to the wedding and i was just like no this is stupid they're both stupid for being friends and that's my take but just anyway. just break just break up just end the relationship yeah, just get rid of it truly i mean why would you ever have why would you ever get into that friendship like i just don't understand it i just it just seems so dumb to me that is or well she could shave her dog <laughs> she could just shave her dog completely well, i guess if she had a hypogenic dog that would be just to work that would solve that problem yeah 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 Yeah, which i mean i guess is cool to like think about people who maybe aren't allergic to dogs Mm -hmm. themselves but like then it makes it easier to have friends i guess who are allergic to dogs but have have you seen the video of the guide horse i saw a link on wikipedia and i was Mm -hmm. looking up guide dog stuff to guide horses yeah yeah they're that's a thing they're these like miniature ponies and they're they're guide horses it seems that seems great. so impractical though. i know but it, they're so cute <laughs> how do you like go inside please i think they make them wear like little boots or something so that their their hoofs don't scrub scuff the floor can they get in places though yeah i mean they, as long as they have the service harness but are they like not too big no they're about the size of like a guide dog they're, that they're, small? they're mini yeah they're miniature ponies oh my gosh mm-hmm. wow 
so you, you can't ride them no one could ride them right but they're they're guide dog sized yeah what if you did have a horse you could ride that was your guide animal? <laughs> then I don't know. <laughs> just get no like exercise, even if you could walk, but just always be on a just horse. Be like go to the store, horse, <laughs> and you just the horse would just take you to the store. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be that would be cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, meanwhile, <laughs> yeah, back ba- back in our movie. Um. So, yeah, we kind of, like, we see them going to Mr. Watanabe reluctantly Mm -hmm. goes to guide dog school and spends a few weeks learning how to be a guide dog um, owner is not the right word, but, like, have a guide dog. Yeah. 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 And, um, and that's, I think we're, I mentioned this earlier, but, like, he fails the initial... (laughs) The initial schooling, like, yes. but it's Mr. Watanabe who feels not Yeah, not Quill. Quill. Quill is an amazing dog. He is gentle and patient, but firm and just kind of knows, I feel like he knows Mr. Watanabe needs him. Yeah. So he's, he's doing all he can as a dog, but Mr. Watanabe is the one who's throwing his hands up in the air. Yeah. He's just <laughs> like, he can't. It's just so silly though. He the can't, things yeah. that he the things that he refuses to do, I'm like, I, I okay. I mean like he's like, I'm just gonna keep walking. Like he's just <laughs> like even when the dog is trying to stop me. And it's just like, really, would you would that be a real thing that someone would be stubborn well, about? Well, maybe. I mean this this gentleman I mean, Mr. Watanabe's not a young man. You know, he's got a wife and two kids. So he ha- you have to think of someone who has done who has gotten around themselves for their entire life. Well, but and we now, have no idea when he becomes blind, and we have we that, have that's the true. assumption because, like, the way his life, it makes you think he's probably been blind for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's like the head of his disability justice group or whatever. Like, he's very active in the community with disability related things. Like, it's obviously not his first rodeo or whatever. Like, he has been a disabled person at least for a decent amount of time. Right, like, it he, seems almost like he's been most of his adult mm-hmm. life. But he hasn't been a disabled person with a guide dog. Right, but he's been a disabled person. Right, but just because, I mean, if you were to give me a guide dog, I wouldn't know what the fuck I'm doing. So it's that's another reason why I'm scared to get a guide dog, because it's me versus the dog. But <laughs> would you really just be, like, stubborn and be like, I'm just going to keep walking, even when the dog's obviously, like, standing I mean, in front of me to say, no, like, stop now? No, <laughs> I think I think the mo- this is where... This is where the the a bit of a drama is inserted in the film. Yeah, you know, it's not. I mean, I think the problem with that too is it does feel like it is just a bald face way to explain the ways that the dog can go against the owner because, like, that's part of a guide dog's training is the guide dog will stop you from walking in the street if the cars are coming, and the guide dog will get in front of you before you walk into something. But like, I don't think that a like a blind person would truly be like i am not even gonna listen to the dog because i'm a stubborn i'm just too stubborn to even pay attention to what the dog is doing um but it is definitely to show the diff because i was like also googling different like explanations of how guide dogs work in the u.s and all of them were like listing the things we saw in the movie of the things the guide dogs do (laughs) to to, like help their owner and go against their owner like um and we see that all of them happen in the movie so it did feel very like just heavy-handedly like this is what guide dogs do this is the different things they're trained to do that that was kind (laughs) of that was kind of nice because the movie feels i mean it feels so much like a documentary because it's so heavily researched yeah but we're kind of seeing the story through this dog right instead of it's not really about it, it becomes about mr watanabe but in but most of the movie at the beginning especially and the end is it's it's about quill right which i think i think my thing with that was that i wanted it to be about quill the whole time mm-hmm. and i think that we got too distracted because mr watanabe was not like a good surrogate to kind of help us see the world through quill's eyes and the friction was never with quill too and i think some in some ways that i kind of wanted to see quill struggle more oh i got you like yeah. i wanted that to be kind of where the drama was more because i think that that if we're like looking at it through the eyes of quill then it's also like he is doing you know he's a straight a student so we're seeing it through his eyes and then we're watching someone who's really struggling 
from his eyes, but I'm like, we could just watch it from the person who's str- like whoever's struggling's eyes. So it felt kind of, um, I don't know. It it felt weird to to kind of orient it that way. Um, but but yeah, it also does kind of really become about Mr. Wananabe for mm-hmm. a bit in that it's Quill is just kind of way more receptive to what's going on well, with him than yeah. having. He's very he's very patient. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and they, and of course, they 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 make it through the program. They graduate the program, and Mr. Watanabe brings Quill home, and he brings him to work. And oh God, the work scene that I was freaking out a little bit because yes, he's in his work with all of these blind disabled folks, but he's like he's trying to show his friend how Quill works, basically, and gives him quill and was like just go walk down the hall like here's the commands tell him how to do this and then just i'm just like oh no you would have to cut my arm off before i would let go of the harness to just give you my dog and be like yeah just go just go try him out you know take a test drive whatever yeah well i mean though the one thing is he's sitting at the time so Mm -hmm. he's not trying to like do anything like it's not like he's needing Quill necessarily like I'm sure you right. could sit without right. Quill doing anything yeah. and it is also like I get that like for to have a blind friend who like just uses a cane you just got a guide dog I, I can see how like I mean if I I have friends who don't use a cane who like I would be like oh here let me show you and have you use it for a second if I'm like sitting down or something you know like that mm-hmm. that or a different kind of cane or whatever and especially in an environment where I feel very comfortable because it's his work so he's there all the time so at least he feels comfortable so that one I was like I, I, I buy that that would happen but the but he is very just like go walk down the hall <laughs> just be far away from everyone here because well, it's like a bunch of people some of which aren't blind right. so at least they could like help spot well, but then he yeah but then he <laughs> freaks out when they take too long right Right, and right. he's like, come with Quill, 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 Quill. Which and is a big part of the Quill problem. just leaves the guy in the hallway and just, like, takes off. And I'm like, oh, jeez. Which is so okay. silly because it's like he's also blind. Like, who mm-hmm. the, the dude who takes Quill. So it's just like, <laughs> why would you? I guess I feel like, I mean, obviously, if I'm showing someone how, how to use my cane or use a cane or if I'm walking on the street, no one touches my cane without when you're, without my permission, you know. Right. And even, even in, a, in a group of friends, like, usually – especially with my improv friends, they will ask, like, even if they have to move it so someone could, you know, if I have it on the seat next to me and they and someone wants to sit next to me, it's always like, can I touch your cane? Can I move your cane so I can sit down? You know, right. Which stuff, is stuff like that. Second PSA, never, ever, ever touch a blind person's cane nope. unless you ask them and get their like verbal permission. Yep, yep. So I guess if I'm equating my dog to my cane, so living cane, I I just don't want anyone to touch my dog, blind or not blind, honestly. And if you want to find out how a guide dog works, well, <laughs> um, catch me on a good day, I guess. I don't know. It's not my job to educate you how this dog works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get that. I think, I mean, for to his credit, though, Mr. Watanabe does suggest it so i feel like it's like different mm. people might have different boundaries so it's not like the other guy is like hey can i use your dog like that's he's the true. one who initiates yeah. it yeah. and also like i would never give someone my cane to like try out if i'm walking with them like oh no 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 but yeah, i no. would give my cane for someone to try out if i'm sitting down and i think that for me i wasn't bothered by because he's sitting down like and that really does make a difference like he just doesn't like you don't need your cane if you're sitting down but if he, he was walking it would be really ridiculous for him to be like here try out the dog but like since he was just <laughs> sitting in a comfortable space i was like yeah i buy that but like but then the fact that he's just like i mean i think it's also he's already breaking on the rules and i'm like <laughs> i bet that's another thing he shouldn't be doing <laughs> especially because no, i'm the guy sure is it's blind another, and not yeah. using his cane like to well, use the dog yeah well and this is when the the trainer from the guide dog school comes confronts him about like hey we know you're going out alone. Stop doing that. Or we'll, well, or we'll take bef- the dog. Yeah, that's before that scene, though. That's like, oh, that's the next okay. scene, I think, um, okay. is because um, he gets upset. The dog trainer gets upset because on its way to work that day, Mr. Watanabe just is walking in the middle of the street. Oh, my God. I just watched that entire scene with my jaw on the floor because I'm like, Quill clearly is freaking the fuck out yeah, cool. like, does not let's go back to the let's does go not want to be here and mr watanabe is just like well there's a traffic jam whatever <laughs> i think that I, I think that that's 
it was it was amazing that he didn't get run over and die. I I can't believe it. I mean, the one thing was they had a car it was just like he was. It's like a bicyclist, I guess. I, like for me, I was like, I guess if you just got lucky, that car is just gonna stop. I mean, like, well, I guess this guy's in the street now. As long as that car doesn't have to turn around, then you have to like worry about the next car. Like at least the fact that each car is kind of depending on each other. Because sometimes when people want, like when he walks into the street, almost with the like bus coming that's when i'm like what the fuck are you doing like that's not smart don't just like run into the street randomly but like but if you're already in the middle of the street and you already have a car that's like you know sees you're there that's for me i'm like okay well i guess if you're gonna do something very stupid that's like the safe on the safer end but there's no need to be doing that (laughs) like why are you in the middle of the road and it was one lane too so that's good as well because you can't have people passing you like it was only one lane instruction unless they want to like do the thing where they it's very dangerous where they pass you. That is, that is true. Still harrowing, nonetheless, to to have to watch them go walk. In the it's just, in the middle I was of the road. just like, this is so. It's funny because I I mean maybe just because I'm so used to L.A. traffic and I'm like, eh, it's nothing. It's a car that's just moving slowly because they can see that the blind guys there and there's no other lanes. But like, I was just like, this just feels so silly. Like, there's no real reason to be doing this, and it's like obviously, oh god, I'm realizing this is such an L.A. thing that I was like, wow, well, the traffic jam that that's gonna cause that that was my first thought not like (laughs) him being in danger which is very embarrassing to think that that's that i've that much of la programmed into my brain that that's where my brain goes to but um but yeah so that's what he gets scolded about which like what the fuck why are you doing that yeah yeah no that's that's earned that's that's necessary yeah but it's also yeah it is kind of sad it's like we'll take him away from you oh i know it's like that's that's the first thing you jump to like we we will take him away and i'm like oh my god that's awful so intense that's terrible yeah i was i was very afraid I, even though i hadn't i hadn't really warmed up to mr watanabe uh at this point nobody wants to see a blind person lose a dog when yeah. you when you work so hard to get one yeah it's definitely like that so and it was just the first time he messed up mm-hmm. technically though mm-hmm. also i'm just like he from the beginning doesn't like dogs and didn't want to have a dog so i was always like why does he even, <laughs> why did he even agree to this but but he does um after that i um, i think it's it's the efficiency because that's what that's that's kind of how this trainer sells him on this whole thing yeah it is you you will be faster you will get around easier it's efficient it is what the trainer says how factual that is is another question yeah i don't know (laughs) Um, i don't i mean i think i don't know i feel pretty comfortable saying i don't think that's like really that much of a real thing or it's definitely not five to an hour much of a real thing but it's yeah i mean i guess if you're going very slow because you're using the cane i mean i guess yeah i I, maybe i am coming from a biased position of being like a naturally extremely fast walker that a dog couldn't really i don't think Mm. i could most people can't physically catch up with me so maybe also maybe i misheard it you know maybe it doesn't take him an hour maybe it only took him a half an hour or something i don't maybe because i couldn't remember exactly but either way unless if it was 10 minutes then i'm like yes i buy this but any more than 10 minutes is a stretch that it could go from that to five um but yeah so that's I guess the idea but at a certain point he becomes frail because we find out like very late in the movie after we've met Mr. Watanabe that he has diabetes and he's like not doing well not just blindness related but also like in other aspects of his health yeah his health is deteriorating yeah Oh, but uh, before we actually before we talk about that though, oh, yeah. I the little scene where they actually bond, like where it starts to click, oh yeah, is when they go for a beer. Right? Is that is that before that though? Because I feel like that's still at the yeah, school. Yeah, that's that that's before I think. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's it's a very it's a just a really cute little scene. Um, yeah, he gets a beer from the vending yeah. machine. He's searching for a beer with Braille, and he misses the first time and gets one without. And then he goes, he's navigating the machine by Quill's sneezes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is making Quill sneeze, but he's navigating. The flowers, I the think. Fl- right, the flowers. He's navigating the machine by Quill's sneezes and picks one. Just like for, I just not like for any real, like he's right. just like he's sneezing. Right. Like, Quill oh, is, this is, yeah, Quill is like sneezing to sneeze. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he but yeah he's he's goofing around and and he's like well okay yeah so and then he gets one with braille and then he they kind of after that they uh they're pretty much inseparable yeah what 
Okay, so is why do you need Braille for the beer? It tells you what kind of beer it is. Okay. There's but so then, many different types of beer. Right, but then he... The second he gets one with Braille, he's like, okay, good. He, like, reads the Braille, but then mm-hmm. he doesn't... But then he's fine with... It. Just because it has Braille, that's enough for him to be... So you would... Because he could have, like, gotten one that had Braille, and he's like, I don't want this kind of beer. Yeah. But he's just like, we need one with Braille, and once we find one with Braille, it's good. <laughs> so it's not like he's actually deciding if he wants to have the beer based on what the Braille says. He just wants one with Braille. <laughs> so he can, I guess, know what it is before he drinks it? I don't know. Didn't totally make sense. Well, yeah, I mean... It was... It, it was to illustrate how he is finally starting to accept Quill's help. Except for... Except for... It's a, it's a joke. I mean, Quill, Quill isn't helping him. He's sneezing. But yeah. in... Yeah. Yeah. It's... I mean, I think it's just it's like kind he's of, warming up to the dog, I yeah. guess. It's... You know, it's not a documentary. It's a movie. So this is... These are kind of the little things that, like, you have to just kind of... It's movie logic. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. It's, it's, it's cute. It's funny. It's a sweet little scene. But movie logic is... Oh, I know. Well, I I on this podcast will never ever defend movie <laughs> logic. I'm the arbiter of that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, but but yeah, no, I I don't know. I I just like I like when things add up because then it's like lazy writing if they don't, in my opinion. But um, but yeah, so that's his. <laughs> yeah, I guess he sneezes. So I was just like, oh no, is he okay? Because like at one point at the beginning when he's when Quill is with his first or like the technically second people but like the first home that he's in for a long period of time he there's like a bug gets on his nose and the bug oh, bites him and he has to get like a <laughs> like a, he has to get cone. a cone so they can fix his nose right, yeah which like so every time he's and at that time he like was sneezing and like hurt but then each time i see we see him sneeze again i'm like oh no is he like getting hurt again and like because you would have no idea like Mm -hmm. if you were blind so i'm always so i was like is he just ignoring that the dog's not okay (laughs) but no it wasn't that um no no just a sweet little little scene between them yeah. yeah um but then they also, I think they're, aren't they like not allowed to be out at that time? Either? Oh, I think so. I think so. <laughs> but but well God not. damn it, Mr. Watanabe wants his beer. <laughs> so he's going to go, he's going to go get one. Yeah. He tries to get one on their first group exercise and kind of gets caught. <laughs> yeah. Because he's not, he's not an alcoholic, but he wants his beer. Yeah. Is that, or does he, I thought he was like. Wasn't he like, eh, well, well, I don't need one yeah, yet. Yeah, because the trainer asked him, like, do you want a beer? And he's like, no, I don't, yeah, I don't need one right yet, no. Right, right. And then he comes up with some silly, like, you know, um, having a nice stroll without alcohol. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where it was a joke that made sense in Japanese, maybe because it rhymed or something, it, and then it, it made no it sense. Sounds, in, in yeah, it sounds like it rhymed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In Japanese, it sounds like it rhymes. So right, it's like, right. Oh, okay, it's one of those. Because he says this to a big group of people, and they're all like, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, that's okay. That's not actually a joke in English, but that's fine. <laughs> I mean, that always happens yeah. with translations, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so. But they make it home after the, after the beer run. Yep. And, and then we get to like them. That's kind of before the stuff we talked about with the street and everything. Right. Right. Um, but then we, we see more of like him, like Quill being back at the house mm-hmm. and the relationship with, I guess we haven't talked about um Watanabe's family at all yet right really. so he has a uh his wife his daughter and his son yeah um I guess we briefly touched on them mm-hmm. um his wife who doesn't like dogs but but like warms up to Quill eventually mm-hmm. um which is another thing where I was like this doesn't seem like a family like they both don't like dogs <laughs> it is a weird it's a weird choice but that's fine um but then um and his son who already loves Quill Yes, who was, and we see him, because in the um, the first time we meet Mr. Wananabe, he's with his son, so I guess we, maybe we did talk about him at that point, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, I love the dog, um, and uh, and then the daughter is the one who's narrating the movie, but mm-hmm. she does not, she kind of is narrating the movie, and she's like, she seems like she has a pretty good relationship with her dad, like they're, they're they have like a... Um, 
kind of friendly father daughter like they're doing like he makes these like um tapes journalistic tapes where he like narrates things and right. she'll do them with him the, the voice bulletin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is very it's cute. really cool yeah um and so yeah but she and she's also narrating the whole movie so i th- feel like we kind of get more of her character f- through the narration than through the um like actual seeing her as a person in the movie um <laughs> but um and yeah so that's i guess uh, yeah that's the family um but but they kind of are just occasionally relevant in the his kind of journey with quill quill at one point gets let out accidentally by the sun yeah he yeah in the rain he tries to give quill an umbrella and quill wants to play and and then just like go over well and leaves the gate open yeah Yeah. and so but i think it's kind of a it's seen as kind of a test you know watanabe mr watanabe is being really kind of standoffish to quill and doesn't really trust him yet and has given him that shitty pen to live in it's yeah. not it's not shitty. It's a fine little pen, but it's just not how I would care for my dog. Um, and it's like raining obviously in the Right, scene. and there's no the dog has that they that the kids made is too small and the, <laughs> he can't get out of the rain and it's just uh, so the, um the, the little boy tries but kind of fails. So Quill gets yeah, runs away. And I think this is illustrated uh it's, this is Quill's chance to just bugger off and not have to deal with Mr. Watanabe right. at all. But he comes back. Yeah, which, of course, he comes back. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean obviously, for the plot of the movie, he has to come back. But also, yeah. just like how dogs work, they still, <laughs> they generally want to come back if they can. I don't know. I mean, obviously, that's not always true. But I do think it's probably. No, yeah, we had, we had a beagle who escaped a lot. No. And but we, at first we would freak out and comb the subdivision. And then after the third or fourth time, we're like, you know, he knows where he gets his food. <laughs> and he he does. Because after you give him about two hours, maybe, and he'd come trotting back. Oh, my gosh. I would never do that just because I'd be so scared. That- oh, I know. No, it's it's terrifying. He's the only <laughs> dog we've ever had that ha- that had do- that has pulled that shit. Yeah. The dog slaying them out. It's not always... Yeah, not a, not a good idea. Not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, definitely shouldn't do it on purpose. No, um, no. But Quill comes back. Yep, and so they're they're friends now. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of get into his health gets worse, and um, he's in and out of the hospital. Yeah, and so while he's in, in and out of the hospital, the the entire time Quill has to be back at the school because while he's in and out of the hospital, there. They, they're saying, like, Quill will come back once he's well enough to be out in the hospital. Mm-hmm. But um, that's, like, three years go by where that where he's not able to go back. And it's kind of sad because you're like, yeah, with the three years going by, like, they could theoretically try to have... Like, some of it he's, like, doing... Um, he's, like, showing demonstrations yeah, for doing, school yeah, kids, guide which dog, is very cute. guide dog demos. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. But... But he, I mean, I don't know if, if something happened and instead of being in and out of the hospital, if Mr. Watanabe, like, um, at that point had died, would they, like, then be able to have him be another guide dog or would it be too late since he's already been, like, he's already been someone's guide dog? I don't know. That's, that's an interesting, yeah, I was thinking about that too. I mean, having never had a guide dog, um... I know that, you know, guide dogs are retired. Right. I would assume, I did feel a little bad for him because I would assume that he would have been given to, uh, try. they would have tried to repair him with somebody. Right, because like, if he, because they had only been a year. So if, because mm-hmm. part of the problem was, yeah, you have, like, he was, like, his dog for a year, but then for three years, it w- he was in and out of the hospital. And then they reunited for one short walk before... Yeah. Mr. Watanabe dies. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, it's been long enough that it doesn't make as much sense because he is much, because Quill now is is much older. So yeah, so that is, it. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're. Well, and I think it's, this, it's kind of sentimental to, to the story because we're told that Quill, <laughs> Quill was never paired with anyone else ever again. It's so sad he was, though. He was Mr. Watanabe's dog. 
till till the end. Well, well, but in a way, kind of like but part of what the movie's about is that a guide dog is, in some ways, their own dog. Like that they are, they have so many owners, and unlike a dog that would be like if you raise a dog as a puppy or something, then that's like they have one home. And even like with rescue dogs that are you know still pretty young it's like they have two homes but like a guide dog is so many different you know like stages of their life like um that it is like kind of abnormal for a dog's lifespan to have so many homes so it just kind of it also felt like oh well at least if any dog is is being prepared for this kind of like you know changing who their person is it would make sense it was a guide dog but yeah, it is. Um, it's very sad though that that he dies and that so much and they only have a year. It's also mm-hmm. just sad that Quill did all that is doing all that work and like it only gets to really. I mean, I guess he gets to do demonstrations, but it is kind of sad when he's like the perfect guide dog and then he like only gets to actually be a real guide dog for a year. That kind of made me sad. And with someone yeah. who is just not very good at, like, having a guy talk for the most no, part. No, I know. I kind of I kinda <laughs> felt like, well, Quill kind of got handed the short end of a stick it here. Really, but, you he know, really did. But. I mean, he loves Mr. Watanabe. And that's, mm-hmm. I mean, of course. And, and it's very cute. But I was and just his, like. Yeah. And Mr. Watanabe's family loves him. And he, he's brought to the funeral as well. Yes, Quill looks at, and it's an open casket, and he looks, and that's when the daughter says, um, I think he must have just thought he was sleeping, Mm. um, which is very sad, because then, if that's true, then Quill is, like, thinking that he was abandoned, but I don't know, I wonder if guide dogs have less of an abandonment thing, or more of one, because they get, like, shipped around so much. Because they're so used to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... When we got Katie, you know, she had her owners had just passed away and she had to grieve. There was two weeks where all she wanted to do was lie around in the garage yeah. and she didn't want to play or she ate, you know, and drank and everything. We got we got her to do that, but she didn't really want to play. We could cuddle her and talk to her that she didn't really want to go on walks. She didn't really want to socialize very much. And we were super worried. And then the third week, <laughs> she kind of wandered into the house and was our dog. Oh, so yeah i mean i think that they're that dogs are very like human focused and but i think they also have kind of a resilience as like a combination of both like really do truly love humans and are always happy to see them even if it's been a very long time but at the same time they have a resiliency that like that they can kind of they can also adapt in certain because i i don't know samwise has a very like um abandonment issues in a lot of ways and so I'm always just like I always think about that and like I if if I did like die or something what how would he be would he like you know would it, if he wound up like being with my parents or something obviously <laughs> obviously this shouldn't be happening but like you know but having if for whatever reason I couldn't have him anymore I guess that's probably less more more likely to have it I'm not planning on it happening but like would he just adjust to it and not like miss all the time or would he just never get over it it's like that freaking Futurama episode with the dog oh no oh god I've only seen that once because yeah, I who has bawled. seen it more than one yeah. time yeah no I can't I don't think I can ever watch it again <laughs> yeah yep yep no 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 but yeah so that's uh yeah I I would like to think that a dog dogs never truly forget you or your their their past owners i mean unless they were past owners or a nightmare or something but well then they might never forget not in a good way (laughs) i'd be really that might be really traumatic but yeah i mean i definitely when um when we got katie and she was having a lot of major health issues and it looked like we might have to um move her on to another home just because we were were a bunch of college kids and we just couldn't we didn't have to in the end thank goodness because we got her fixed up but you could tell like I was just like I don't think she could take another another moving mm. I don't I think it would just get to her too much and we didn't have to and I mean uh shadow was this was the same way he was so he was so bonded to us that I think if we were to ever give him up or move him on that I, I don't I'm not sure if he would have taken it very well at all yeah it's hard yeah he'd been with us since he was a puppy yeah so we had the funeral and then quill lives out Quill stays at the guide dog school 
until, yeah for a little bit until he's about 11 yeah until he's retirement age yep 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 and he goes back to live with his first um foster family yeah and that's where he dies mm-hmm. yeah yeah oh quill i know oh my gosh i know that that oof, that last scene it's beautiful but it's it was hard because i mean he it's it's rough i mean he collapses he's trying to get up the step to go into the house and he flat out why do we falls always, over and i'm like oh my god why do we always watch movies with like someone falls and you get it from different angles i mean like, well this keeps mr watanabe ran into his fair share of things yeah though those are at least we don't have to see them from different angles we don't have to see the instant replays of those um but yeah that's yeah. Yeah. um that's poor, poor girl, but yeah but i mean you know it's he had a in the end he had a really good life. He gave his life to helping others. Yeah. Oh, Quill. I the, know. Little Quill. The Japanese guide dog from mm. this fictional movie <laughs> from 2004. Um, mm. Do you... I, I, is there any other loose ends we want to talk about? I can't think of anything. But. No, I mean, this movie is, like you said, it's it's incredibly straightforward. Yeah. It, does, it does exactly what it sets out to do. Yeah. It is both joyous and heartbreaking <laughs> but, and there's a lot know. of just video of dogs being cute so mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is fun yeah it gets worse sad at yeah in the second half it's but. yes it's definitely not as chaotic as something like uh marley and me or no you know pick an american dog movie like it's a very it's a very quiet a little slow at times but i was never bored no it's not yeah yeah it's It's, kind of it's very good you know what it is it does have a like a mr rogers kind of Mm -hmm. pacing feel Mm -hmm. i think there's like it's it's supposed to be very soothing but not like i don't know it's not supposed to be necessarily boring and like it's just yeah that there's it's because at a very very even pace that's not super fast and we're kind of just like you know and also i think when you have um when you're watching a dog you're very unfocused on how much time you've been watching this dog <laughs> like it was when they when it became more about humans that's what's like oh how much time do we have left but when it was just dogs i was like didn't care at all i'm just like i'm watching a dog i don't yeah. need to be doing anything else mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't need to be sleeping i'm watching a dog um but yeah so um let's do our blindness acuity test sure um, I can start. Go for it. Um, I'm gonna give this movie a twenty one hundred. Okay. I think that um, it was a lot of fun to watch, like the the process of guide dogs and kind of like to live in that world. And that's I think why I'm giving it a twenty one hundred because I feel like it was you know very it had that very educational. This is how it all works, but it is also like a fun exercise to think about it from that perspective of a dog, you know, as well. Like I think that's kind of a fun thing to to watch that dog's lifetime because it's something I think about a lot with guide dogs. So I I I really like that. I like watching the dogs and kind of watching that how that system operates. Um, I felt like when it actually came to our blind character, I just, it just, he did, I didn't buy him that much. Like, I just thought it was just very bizarre and he felt way more like, you know, at times like a plot device and it was kind of hard to really understand exactly why he was behaving in such extreme ways (laughs) that felt kind of not really like they had a lot of purpose like I guess maybe to be contrary but sometimes you were just like you didn't really fully you didn't kind of get super good understanding of what what was kind of leading that behavior and sometimes it just kind of felt like it wasn't a just there wasn't a blind person you know writing any of it or performing it like it just kind of felt like the actual experience of a blind person was was lost somewhere in it um and I, I don't know if the movie was necessarily thinking as much about like I think they were really thinking of it from the dog's perspective and really just didn't do a lot to think of it from the blind person's perspective. So that's why I'm not. Well, also, it's, he, I, I think he is the way that he, that he is because you have to insert some kind of conflict. I mean, if, if Quill is supposed to be this most, the most uh, an amazing, wonderful, incredible guide dog, then you have to show, 
you'd have to have someone to show trial and error because there would be no conflict. He's right. just given the perfect person and they're perfect together and they go off in Wait, the sunset. Wait, if he's the perfect dog, because I guess, right. yeah, that's the other thing. So you can make it so that the dog is the one. And <laughs> is this like an American thing to have the dog? I don't know. Like that I'm just like, yeah, it should be the dog that's fucking up because it's like we're if we're gonna supposed to relate to this character they need to be the one fucking up i don't know maybe that's what it is but like um but i just i because i think also for me i do think about like how it's so hard for the dogs to pass and so when i hear about dogs like in guide dog school my brain does not go to like anything to do with the blind people it goes specifically to how hard it is for them to pass and how difficult it is and how and like to relate to a dog that is struggling to pass i mean i guess it's like an underdog story like literally underdog story is what i was looking for and that is a very (laughs) it's a very american that is like the most american plot device so maybe that's what where it's coming from but um but yeah i just but i i I mean, yeah, you need conflict, and I guess if you do want to make it about a perfect dog, then you can have that, like, you need to find some way to have that conflict, but I think there's, I mean, I guess it's also, like, it pulls on your heartstrings if it's too much, like, there can't, the dog can't be without, you know, and then it's, like, one of those commercials, and then it's, like, with sad music and all the dogs being sad, and then you're just like, oh, God, this is so manipulative, so I don't think I want that, but I just... Like, I just wanted him to be at least, if nothing else, I just wanted to understand him better. Because he just, I just had a lot of trouble understanding what was motivating him and his behavior. And I I just really wanted to, like, have more um, understanding and empathy towards him. Um, And and I was just kind of sad that that was not something that they were really going to going to investigate at all. So that's fair. That's that is that's a fair assessment. And yeah. Yeah, so that's my my reading. Where are you? I'm sitting at um I think I'm twenty three hundred. Nice. Even though I, I wasn't really fond of Mr. Watanabe, I liked seeing their relationship develop. Uh, I had also never seen a movie like this. Yeah. I loved I loved seeing this story through the eyes of a guide dog. Yeah. I think that's a really neat way to approach blindness. I wish the blind characters were more developed and we knew a little yeah. bit more about them. But this was focusing on Quill. Right. On on the guide dog. And honestly, when it was just when it felt like an educational documentary, I really loved those <laughs> those parts. Because yeah. I just I like that stuff. I like to learn. I really I really enjoy that stuff. And I just kinda wanted to be there with the dog, with with Quill. And I I'd sometimes I don't even think you needed the voiceover. Yeah, you just I just kind of wanted to see just be with him and and experience the world how he was experiencing the world. He could have a voice. Oh, no, I don't want that. No, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want that either. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, this, this was an American film. He, it, he would. He would, would have yes, a voice definitely. Yeah, yeah, to tell it. you how you're supposed to feel. Right. Well, I don't need to be told how I'm supposed to feel. Let yeah. me feel how I'm supposed to feel, how I want to feel. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, I I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a real a real treat. <laughs> if and I I like this for for ones that we aren't like this is a perfect movie. What how would we change it? Because I'm wondering if you would agree, but maybe like the best way for both of us, in our opinion, to change it is just make it far more of like a documentary thing that just tells you about how guide dogs work and like take away the kind of like forced <laughs> like drama um, and whatnot. drama yeah. and emotional. Yeah, things. I just want to see. What if he succeeds or fails on his own, on his own merit? Yeah, you, know? you could still even if he is struggling to succeed, you can still it can still be very meditative, and it doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. have to be super manipulative. It can be pretty like, you know, we're just watching things happen, and and he's struggling, but but we kind of like, and he can like pass in the end, but it would be you know he's just doing a good job, and like, yeah. but he figures it out. Like yeah. he struggles a little bit at the beginning and figures it out, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, so more more just dog. Less less this is the one time we'll be like less blind people. We just want to see the dog. <laughs> just more just more dog. Yeah. Much much dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, the only time our rating will be just take out the blind people and make it make it better. <laughs> um, but not really. You can 
you should still have some blood in your minute. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, awesome. So then, um, oh yeah, and for eye lines, he wears sunglasses the entire time. So the entire time. time. Just, yep. We literally don't see what his eyes look yep. like. Cool. I think oh, maybe see, he when he's dead. You see him once in, you see it once in the hospital. That's oh, it. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. We do. Yeah. But he's like looking up, I guess. But he's also like hooked up to a bunch of tubes. Unconscious. Yeah. So even yeah. if he could, like, I forgot that he was blind in that moment because yeah. he doesn't have the sunglasses. <laughs> he's not just does not feel like a very specifically blind performance but do we know if the actor himself was blind? i tried to look it up it okay. didn't he definitely didn't seem like it and it didn't say anything okay. on like IMDb or on wikipedia or anything about him being blind i definitely didn't feel like he was i don't think he was um but yeah there's if he is it's it's a well-kept secret <laughs> <laughs> but i don't think he is um yeah okay what um what do we do next how does this podcast work (laughs) um i guess we kind of switch around the order but what um are we doing next week uh next week we are talking about the 1999 film at first sight uh Um, starring val kilmer and mira sorvino yes Yes, uh, this is a about a man who is blind, Val Kilmer, and is convinced to undergo a groundbreaking medical surgery to get back his vision. And wackiness ensues. Exactly, and hijinks <laughs> ensues. Yeah. yeah, but it will be. This is going to definitely be. Uh, I'm. I can't. Yeah, can't imagine we won't. We'll have nothing to talk about. I'm, I feel like this is going to be a good, good one. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, and if you want to watch along with us, you can watch on Amazon Prime. And that is the only place that um, it's streaming. But you can. Oh wait. Oh no, and there are. It's also streaming on like Hoopla. It's actually streaming on a lot of different oh, shit. things. Yeah. So then, um, the only thing left is is just some other thing that doesn't necessarily have to do with blindness that we like. <laughs> I think we should land that on was, that. That title. was real succinct. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay. So, are you? Do you want? Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go? First? Um, you go first. Okay. We'll switch off. Samwise is like, hey, this. You did a whole episode about dogs, and you don't include me. I so know. he is just. He's just making his presence Sorry, known. Buddy. Puppy, puppy. Uh, okay, so mine, actually, I'm going to go with what we talked a little bit about um, when we were talking about Quill, which is the the series on Disney Plus called Pick of the Litter. And it follows a, a small group of guide dogs, uh, puppies at first, and it follows them through their uh, puppy raisers. Uh-oh. And there's a couple episodes dedicated to that. And then it follows the ones that make it or don't make it, we don't know, into the guide dog program. And it follows them uh, through school and through their training up until they get paired with their human. Oh, so, so cute. it's very sweet. If you if you just want to watch like puppies, this is a really great show because they're little, little puppies and they it's just fun to watch them get trained. And well, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I just like watching dogs. <laughs> it's kind of like this movie, but the our way that we were going to. Yeah, make it. this this is an actual documentary. These are real people, real guide dogs. Yeah. And you I mean, you don't have to read subtitles, which no, it's English. If you <laughs> can see, is nice. But does it have yeah. audio descriptions? I think it does. I haven't, I plus. haven't watched it with audio descriptions, but I think it does. Oh, you had to put it on automatic, man. It's the best. I know. I keep forgetting because I, I know pretty much everything on Disney Plus. I believe has audio description. Yeah, I know High School Musical. The music, High School Musical, <laughs> High School Musical, the musical. I think is what it's called. Oh, the High School Musical, the musical, the series. That's is it. what it's called. That took me a second, um, but. Yeah, that had audio descriptions. Nice. So yeah. I watched so, that all with audio descriptions. Nice. Yeah. Uh, if you can't get enough of guide dogs after watching Quill, check out Pick of the Litter, streaming on Disney+. Plus. All guide dogs all the time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, recommend a uh, a series that's on a streamer, but it's nothing to do with guide dogs, so sorry. Uh, I don't think it has any dogs at all. Um, <laughs> but I have been watching the TV show Dark. It is a Netflix um, German show that has it uh, both audio description and dubs. Also, if you speak German, it has German audio descriptions, um, which is very cool because it's a Netflix show, so they always have audio descriptions. Um, but it is um, just about a town with a nuclear power plant um and 
in that town there is a time machine or there becomes a time machine at different points in time and there is just a like four families that have a very convoluted relationships to each other and they're just constantly traveling back in time or forward in time and getting like stuck in different places and it is extremely convoluted <laughs> Um, it you're, just, you're really selling this. I by know, the way. but I, I mean, I. It's a lot of fun because it's just very, um, very silly in just in the convolutedness of it. But it is like a very good kind of like both popcorn like TV show. Just like you're like, whoa, what's gonna happen next? What is <laughs> what is going on? And it's also like because um, you just are really. It's kind of, it has a little bit of, like, that uh, Twin Peaks, definitely. It's definitely very Twin Peaksy at the beginning. Um, but, so, sometimes you're like, is anything ever going to get explained? But then some, but then it has, like, at least started to explain things, a little, maybe a little bit more than certain shows that don't really bother explaining things, like Lost or something. Um, but you, it's still just, like, very complicated, but you're just trying to figure out, um what is going on and it kind of I guess like I feel like at this point it's about string theory where I am in like season three <laughs> but um but it's just I don't know it is just very fun and a roller coaster and also um right now I am just all I can think about uh, is my life before <laughs> the quarantine and after the quarantine and there's something just very comforting about like what well, time is just it's imaginary it's not real <laughs> like we can just go around in time very easily with the no just you know just create a time machine and just have it in a cave so so I don't know it's kind of like wish fulfillment right now um but yeah so that's what I've been watching it's the show dark um it is a on netflix it is german but it has all sorts of different audio options for any of your preferred methods the dub's not great but um but it's it means exists. i can hear it yeah, yeah. so I, I have no and we have audio description so no complaints really <laughs> um but yeah so that that's it um we did it we made a podcast Brilliant. yeah we did it way to go us yes <laughs> this is the life of our podcast um <laughs> it's a journey um our theme song is by lucia fasano our twitter is white cane pod our instagram is citizen white cane and our facebook is at citizen white cane our email is citizen white cane pod at gmail.com if you would like to send us a voice message um do you have a guide dog obviously do and you, what do you think yeah yeah do you want a guide dog yeah do you um how do you prefer watching um just video of puppies or reading subtitles which is your preferred <laughs> thing or both if you could pick out your own name for your own guide dog what would they be oh if yeah if you couldn't pick a name for a guide dog what would be if you had just five options which one would you pick um do <laughs> you have to like team up with someone to give you five options and then you pick one um but or if you just want to tell us about a movie that we should cover um and or just like say you like the podcast or have some just experiences in the world uh, you can find the link in the show notes um and and send that voice message our way uh, if you like the show so you can rate, review, and subscribe it, you can come back and listen to it again and tell people that you like it. We would appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and get come back next week. We have At First Sight. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>